Alright, yeah, welcome back to some more Magic Jewels. This week we're going to be taking a look at a Rakdos Aggro deck. As you can see, I uh, haven't named the deck yet. So, it's Rakdos Aggro at the moment. Uh, it's essentially, I started out building a what's yours is mine kind of strategy, which involves around stealing your opponent's creatures. But of course, you had to compromise a little bit with the deck build since super friends and vehicles and things like that are so rampant right now. There are a lot of creatureless matchups, so... One half of it had to compensate for the lack of potential creature matchups, but as I ended up building the deck, the things I ended up cutting were actually the creature stealing stuff. So what we've ended up with is actually just an aggro um, strategy with a little bit of creature stealing in there. I'll show you the deck anyway, guys. Uh, it's a very low curve deck as well. We curve out at three, if my memory serves. Yes, we do, all the way up at three. So we're running 22 lands as well. Um, because of that, we don't really want to be drawing into more than four lands in the entire game, to be honest. So, once we've found them, we are good to go. So, we've got Insolent Neonate, which is a 1 red, 1 1 menacing vampire. It also has the ability to be uh, discard a card and sacrifice itself to draw a card. So, if we do end up flooding out and we end up getting more lands than we really want to, we can actually sacrifice our Insolent Neonate, discard a card, and then get a redraw, which might be... A burn spell or a new creature or something like that but we also have the ability to discard and there are a few madness cards in the deck more specifically there is a single madness card in the deck fiery temper so that is a one and two red instant speed fiery temper deals three damage to target creature or player so three damage for three mana isn't too great it's all right in in jewels to be honest but in like standard or modern that's terrible but it does have the madness cost of one red so if we discard Fiery Temper. We only have to pay one red mana, which puts it into Lightning Bolt kind of um, power level as well, which is exactly what Modern would use and that kind of thing. So, yeah, we can Fiery Temper off pretty cheaply as long as we've got that. We also have the Air of Falcon Reef to discard as well. I will keep calling it Falcon Reef, and there is no reason for me to do that, and I apologize. Next, we've got Bomac Courier. So, for one colorless mana, for a 1 1 hasting artifact creature. Whenever Bomac Courier attacks, exile the top card of your library face down. You cannot look at it. And then you can pay one red mana to discard your hand, sacrifice Bomac Courier, and put all cards exiled with Bomac Courier into their owner's hands. So this is a great way to refill our hand, but also when we go to uh, sacrifice it and discard our hand, anything that's got madness in, like our Fiery Tempers, will suddenly be able to go off as well. So we can use that to trigger all of our burn spells that we might have in our hand as well depending on the situation. But it's really here just for that aggressive start, as in a nice little 1-1 one -one getting in there immediately, and also to refill our hand later on in the game so we can keep up our um, our pressure. Because one thing that Aggro really worries with uh, worries about is losing all of its card advantage, running out steam, and then just losing. So Bomac Courier allows us to prevent that somewhat. We then have Shock, so for 1 red mana, instant speed, Shock deals 2 damage to target creature or player. So we've also got a little bit of a burn strategy. As I mentioned, it was going to be a what's yours is mine kind of strategy, which is like wrangle, gain control of target creature. We were going to go full on into that kind of thing, but um, with burn as the backup strategy to take care of planeswalkers and finish off our opponent, that kind of thing. So Shock came in here for that kind of reason. It ended up sticking around. Because 2 damage to a target creature or player actually deals with a lot of stuff in the early game. Because we do want to be able to push through our early game stuff, like our Bomac Couriers and things like that. So Shock is a great way to burn out our opponent that way. And also we can hit the player itself, or even a Planeswalker, if it needs to be done. We then have Glint Sleeve Siphoner. Yet another little bit of card advantage in an aggro deck, but also a really good aggressive hitter as well. So for 1 and a black, for a 2-1 with Menace. Menace essentially means that um, it can only be blocked by two or more creatures. So early on in the game, Glint Sleeve Siphoner will not be able to be blocked unless they've got two creatures. And that, that's where Shock comes in as well. Because if they're using like servos or something like that, it only has one toughness. So it needs to be not blocked at all, otherwise it's going to trade. So we can use Shock's... Um, to get rid of maybe their second creature so it essentially becomes unblockable and we can get him because it does have the ability when it enters the battlefield to gain one energy but also when it attacks as well so we want to be attacking in as much as possible with the siphoner and the main reason for that is at the beginning of your upkeep you get to pay two energy and if you do you get to draw a card and lose a life as well so that's yet again our card advantage for the the deck we do have Harness Lightnings as well to gain a little bit of energy. If we don't spend it all, we can use it on the Siphoner 
as well. That is a possibility just to keep our pressure going. That one life is really negligible at the, um, for aggro, really, because we're planning on killing our opponent really fast. So we're going to be using our life total as a little bit of a resource as well in this deck. We then have Heir of Falcon Wrath. Thank you. For one and a black, a 2-1 uh, vampire that says discard a card, transform it, only do this once each turn. So we can use this to discard our Fiery Tempers so we can madness them off for one red mana. Uh, other than that, we could get rid of our lands or something like that. And when we do, we get ourselves a 3-2 flyer. It's nothing too special, but it does enable our madness cards. And it is also a 3-2 beater in the air for two mana which is not too bad at all, if I do say so myself. So we've got two copies in there. Not going three, because they're not ob they're obviously not that good, and most of the Madness cards ended up coming out anyway, so um, most of that is just there for occasionally we might want to Fiery Temper off, and also a 3-2 Flyer, which is pretty sweet. Next, we've got Kari Zev, Skyship Raider. So for one and a red, this is one of our other big hitters as well. He's a legendary creature with one, three power and toughness and first strike and menace. So menace yet again means it can only be blocked by two or more creatures. First strike means that the one damage is going to go in first. So if our opponent wants to um, block with three servos, for example, the first strike's going to take out one of them and then the rest of the servos are only going to do two damage. So our opponent really needs to block with better creatures in order to get rid of Karizev. But what Karizev really does is put on the extra little bit of pressure because she is only hitting for one herself. But also, whenever she attacks, she creates a legendary 2-1 red monkey called Ragavan that is tapped and attacking and it gets exiled at the end of combat. So we had essentially hit for three with Karizev and the menace means that um, we can always do that and get this 2-1 in. The 2-1 is nothing special. It can be blocked, of course, but in the early game, that might actually be trading off a creature, which is pretty sweet. She's actually very good in this deck. I do appreciate her a lot. We then have Scrap Heap Scrounger. So for two colorless mana for a 3-2 artifact creature. Scrap Heap Scrounger cannot block. Um, the main reason to put him in is, one, to enable the artifact on Unlicensed Disintegration, and we'll get to that soon enough. But also, it allows us to keep up the pressure, because once we've lost all of our creatures, we're not really doing anything. However, Scrap Heap Scrounger does have this secondary ability that says, uh, one and a black, well, it's technically his first ability. I would call this a disability, to be honest, being <laughs> making it not block, but a 3-2 hitter for two mana is also really good. So that is a nice little bit of aggro there. But the one and a black, exile a target creature from your graveyard, return the scrounger from the graveyard to the battlefield. So we can keep recurring the scrounger over and over and over again. We don't have any way of getting our creatures back from the graveyard, so they are purely a resource for the scrounger at that point. So there's almost certainly going to be something in there in the late game for us to bring back that scrounger. And if our opponent forgets it's in the graveyard, we can maybe even steal a win out from underneath them as well with this card, which is awesome. We then have Smuggler's Copter, so for two colourless mana, a 3-3 vehicle with flying. Whenever Smuggler's Copter attacks or blocks, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card, so we get to loot. It also has Crew 1, which means every single creature in our deck can crew it and get in over the top. So if we find that maybe Carrie Zev can't get in anymore, then we can use her one power to crew up Smuggler's Copter and hit for three in the air. But that looting ability as well allows us to get out of maybe a mana flood as well. We are running 22 lands, but if we run... Uh, end up um, finding a lot more than that during the game, then we definitely do not want them. And we want to be discarding them to Smuggler's Copter to maybe find burn, removal, or more creatures. So Smuggler's Copter is really good for that kind of thing. We then have Harness Lightning. So for one and a red instant speed, choose a target creature. You get three energy, and then you may pay any amount of energy. Harness Lightning deals that much damage to that creature. So on its own, it deals three damage to a creature for two mana. It's not too bad. It's actually... In terms of just hitting creatures, it's better than a Fiery Temper. It's one mana cheaper, essentially. But um, it will only hit creatures and not players, which is why Fiery Temper is still awesome. But we do have a lot of ways to generate energy. As we mentioned, Glintsleeve Glint Siphoner can generate energy herself. We might want to spend that on card draw. And if we're using Harness Lightning to take something down with one Toughness or something like that, then we've got two energy left over. And the Siphoner can use that energy to draw us some cards. So there is a nice little energy synergy in the deck as well. But we do have a few ways of getting energy. But most of all, it's just to get there um, to get rid of the early game threats. So that we can push through our creatures and get that damage through. Get them down to a nice low life total. And then just ping them to death with burn spells. That is the plan. 
We then have Wrangle. I didn't even know this was a card until I went looking for this strategy. So for one and a red, sorcery speed, gain control of target creature with power four or less until the end of the turn. Untap that creature, it gains haste until the end of the turn. So as long as our opponent has a creature on the board with power four or less, we can take it and hit them with it. Which is actually really good. That'll actually hit Kalatas. It'll hit... Um, the Sylvan Advocates, it'll hit a lot of the big, high-value creatures. Not the high mana cost creatures, mind you. They're likely to be a little bit higher than 4 power, but being able to get rid of one of our opponent's bigger, maybe valuable creatures is pretty sweet, so Wrangle is awesome for that. It gets it out of the way as well. 4 power is enough to take down any of our creatures, so if that's his only blocker, he's going to lose it. Only two copies of this, because we do have some later on. Yes, we have Kerry's episode expertise. So, only two of them. As I said, we, we went for this kind of strategy, but uh, slowly but surely I ended up removing a fair few of them just to make sure that we had this nice good value aggro deck, which is what it is now. It still has the essence of what it used to be, but yes. Gremlins are loyal to nothing but their next meal. Yes. We then have Lafnu Hellion. So for two and a red, we have a 4-4 four four with haste. So for three mana, we can get straight in there for four damage. So maybe turn one, we go Bomat Courier hit for one. Turn two, we get ourselves a Carry Zev. Turn three, we're hitting with the Bomat Courier and the Carry Zev, which is four by itself, eight damage with a Lathnu Hellion on turn three. So there is a lot of value there. But it also has um, an ability when it enters the battlefield, you gain two energy. However, at the beginning of your end step, sacrifice it unless you pay it to energy. So, uh, in order to keep Lath New Hellion around, we need to be able to pay the upkeep on that. And the Glint Sleeve Siphoner does help with that. We can use the uh, the energy she generates to keep the Hellion around instead of drawing cards. But we also have ourselves Ether Hubs to generate a little bit of energy. And of course, we have our Harness Lightnings as well. So, if we do want to keep it around, we do have a fair few cards that are going to allow us to do that. But at the very least, if it doesn't get removed by our opponents, by her opponent, and it gets in all of its damage, it's going to do 8 before we have to sacrifice it. So, it's not too bad for 3 mana, I would say. We then have Hanweir Garrison. So, for 2 and a red creature, Human Soldier. It is a 2-3, which is a not a bad creature at all. Uh, in this kind of early game strategy. And whenever it attacks, you get to put two 1-1 one, one red human creature tokens onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking. This guy can get out of hand very quickly if you do not deal with him. There are, of course, a lot of removal spells like Harness Lightning and Fiery Temper that can do it, but that would require our opponent to take out their turn three, essentially, to deal with the garrison. And we likely have other creatures dealing a fair amount as well. We're probably dealing about four damage minimum usually around the time that they want to get rid of this garrison so we're already doing a lot of damage putting a lot of pressure on the board so and we're garrison can uh, either eat removal or it can get in a lot of damage as well and go really wide on our opponent and stop them from blocking there is a meld as well on the back which is that the writhing township we'll get to that in a second it is possible in this deck though not very likely i would say we have Fiery Temper, we have spoken about that. We then have Unlicensed Disintegration. So for one, a black and a red, instant speed, destroy target creature. If you control an artifact, Unlicensed Disintegration deals three damage to target that creature's controller. So, um, this is for when the burn spells are just not going to do it, or we maybe want to point those burn spells at our opponent. So, Unlicensed Disintegration is going to get rid of the things that we can't deal with. So, if Wrangle can't get rid of a blocker out of the way, then we can disintegrate it. If Shock or Harness Lightning is not going to do the job, we can disintegrate it. And if we have an artifact on the battlefield, like our Bomat Courier, like our Scrounger or our Smuggler's Copter, as I mentioned, Scrounger is hard to get rid of once he's on the battlefield as well, so... It is quite likely that we do have an artifact on the field, and if we do, it deals 3 damage to that controller as well, that player. So it is a... essentially it's another fiery temper if we can remove one of our opponent's creatures, which is pretty sweet. We then have Exquisite Firecraft. So for 1 and 2 red, Sorcery Speed, one of the best ways to close out a game in my opinion. Exquisite Firecraft deals 4 damage to target creature or player. So we can point this at a creature, but most likely we want to be pointing at our opponent. It does have Spell Mastery, which means that if there are 2 or more instants or sorceries in your graveyard, then it cannot be countered. So our opponent essentially, if we are going for the lethal attack with a Firecraft, 
Our opponent has to have life gain in their hand or they die. If we're excuse me, if we're against a control matchup, there is nothing they can do about it because we will likely have a lot of instants and sorceries in the graveyard to begin with. So spell mastery is likely to be online by the time we want to go finish and four damage can get rid of any creature and also finish our opponent, which is pretty sweet. We then have Collective Defiance, a very good utility card. Uh, has won me many games in the past. So for one and two red, Sorcery Speed. It does have Escalate, but we'll get to that in a second. We get to choose one or more. So the three options that we have available are Target Player discards all the cards in his or, hand, his or her hand and then draws that many cards. So if we have a handful of lands, then we definitely do not want them. And we want to be using that kind of um, strategy. If our opponents maybe fetched a card into their hand and not cast it. And we don't want them to have it. We could point this at our opponent as well. Though that doesn't happen very often. And you probably shouldn't do it. Because you could potentially improve their hand if you're not careful. So we mostly want to use this on ourselves. And of course when we're discarding cards. We trigger any fiery tempers that are in our hand as well. So if we keep that in mind we can maybe use... An extra little bit of burn off of the Collective Defiance. The second ability allows us to deal 4 damage to target creature. This gets rid of most creatures in the format in the early game anyway that we want to deal with. As I mentioned, we can pretty much move anything that we want out of the way um, in the first couple of turns. And anything we can't, we've got the Disintegration for. But Collective Defiance is pretty sweet for taking out a creature. And it's not the only thing that we can do with this card. Finally, we get to deal 3 damage to target opponent. We can point that at our opponent, or we can point at one of their planeswalkers as well. And if our opponent has minus a planeswalker, there's a good chance it's going to be on 3 loyalty or less, so it could be a removal spell for them as well. Or even if we've got a menacing creature, which is usually quite low on the power level, um, it might be all we need to close out and finish off our opponent's planeswalkers. Let's get back to Escalate, shall we? So the Escalate is a one colourless cost. It's different for every Escalate card, but this one takes one extra mana for every single mode you want to choose beyond the first. So we could technically do all three for six mana. So if we want to, for example, deal three damage to our opponent, it's going to cost us one and two red. If we want to deal three damage to our opponent and remove our opponent's creatures, then it's going to cost us three mana and two red, and so on and so forth. We can't choose the same one twice, uh, but we can choose all three if we want to spend all of our mana and our entire turn on it. It's possible that we want to do that. We definitely want to get as much value out of Collective Defiance as possible. Finally, we have Carry Zev's Expertise. So for one and two red, Sorcery Speed. Gain control of target creature or vehicle until the end of the turn. Untap it, it gains haste until the end of the turn. You may cast a card with converted mana cost two or less from your hand without paying its mana cost. So for three mana, we get another. We get to take our opponent's creature or vehicle, and we also get whatever's in our hand for converted mana cost two or less, which is pretty sweet. We are running a very low co uh, converted mana cost uh, deck as well, so we can wrangle, we can remove creatures, we can put vehicles and artifacts down. We could even put Carrie Zev herself onto the battlefield as well. We've got a lot of options here. So this could do a fair amount of damage as well. So for three mana, we can maybe get five mana's worth of value in there. And also maybe even close out the game by stealing our opponent's creatures or vehicles. We can take their Sky Sovereign and kill their Planeswalker, for example. That is a uh, possibility. Uh, I do believe we have to crew it, though. It will not become a creature just by us stealing it. So we will still be uh, we'll still have to bit pay the crew cost. But um, most of the time, probably just want to steal a creature, to be honest. Uh, so that's essentially the deck. We're going to move on to the mana base. It's pretty simple, to be honest. As you can see, we are heavily skewed into red here. We don't have any double blacks, but we do have them very early on in the game, as early as turn two. So we do want to be hitting them, hitting um, swamps quite consistently, which is why I've not gone heavier into the skew here. We've only gone to six swamps and eight mountains here. Um, you never want to not hit your swamps or not hit your mountains here. So... That's the balance that we've gone, and then from that point on, we've got a nice balanced little bit of land here as well. So, Smoldering Marsh is a Swamp Mountain that taps for red or black, and it ends the battlefield tapped unless you control two or more basic lands. The only downside to this card here is it's most likely going to come into play tapped, especially in the early game. Um, but if we don't have a turn one play, we can put this down, and it's going to be able to enable maybe our turn three double reds, which is really important to us. It's the only reason I'm running a potentially tapped land because we definitely want to hit double red but we also want to be able to hit our black cards on turn two as well so 
That's why we're running Smoldering Marsh. Dragon Skull Summit isn't actually as bad in that sense. It, um, it will come into play untapped more often. And it's a battlefield tapped unless you control a swamp or a mountain. Taps for red or black. Uh, so if we have a swamp or a mountain in play, then it comes into play untapped. Smoldering Marsh is also a swamp mountain. So if this has came into play on turn one, turn two, Dragon Skull Summit, we have two dual lands untapped ready to go. So it's pretty sweet. We then have Hanweir Battlements. I did say we were going to come back to this. Uh, if you remember the Hanweir Garrison, uh, it adds, uh, this is its meld cast. Um, card essentially so it adds colors to the mana pool which isn't ideal however what it does also do is allow us to pay red tap it and give a creature haste until the end of the turn not all of our creatures are hasting creatures for example Hanway garrison we could pay for essentially to make it a two three with haste that makes two one ones that's the the idea essentially so there are cards in the deck that do benefit from getting the haste ability from the battlements but the other ability is to pay three and two red this is the reason we're not going to see it very often would be my guess because we are running a low convert mana cost deck as i said we curve out at three so the only way we're going to see this is if we're either late in the game or we've maybe flooded out that kind of thing but for five mana we tap it cannot tap the handway battlements for that so it's technically six in that sense because we do require that the battlements gets tapped if you both own and control Hanweir Battlements and a creature named Hanweir Garrison, exile them and then meld them into the Writhing Township. This is the Writhing Township. It is a 7-4 legendary trampling haste Eldrazi Ooze. And when it enters the battle, when it attacks, sorry, you can create two 3-2 three, two Eldrazi Horrors instead of two 1-1s. One, so not only do we get a 7-4 with Trample to push through that la last little bit of damage, but we also generate six points of power as well coming alongside. So it requires that three blocks be made in order to um, stop us from dealing damage. Unfortunately, it does have four toughness, so we are still going to have to use our removal spells to clear the way, but I think that's more than doable. Finally, we have Ether Hub. Ether Hub enters the battlefield and you gain one energy. The energy can be used to make one mana of any colour to our mana pool, but it can also be used for the Hellion and the Siphoner as well, or even the Harness Lightning. Other than that, it adds a colourless to our mana pool as well, so we don't always have to spend the energy that it generates, so a lot of the times we could actually use it to keep Hellion around, that kind of thing. Anyway guys, that's going to do it for the deck. Be sure to check out the matches if you are intrigued as to how well this deck performs. I think it is a quite interesting myself. So be sure to check out the matches that should be following if not already out as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you did like the deck tech and the magic videos that we put out as well. And really appreciate it. It allows me to get seen on the YouTube circuit as it were so I would greatly appreciate it if you did like and subscribe and also hit the little bell icon as well right next to the subscription button and it'll notify you when I release new videos ready for you to watch all right guys hope you enjoyed I'll see you next time bye bye